Yeah, so I was uh Senegal and and the Gambia. I kind of missed I kind of missed the Gambia, man. You know, I never, I didn't really I wasn't really feeling Senegal like that because of that French thing. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's uh, that's always one of those uh, situations without a doubt. So you know, there's three reasons why we're in Senegal uh, for you know Gori Island, the Black Civilization Museum, and uh, the African Renaissance Monument. Uh, those are the three things that's the highlight on the other than that um, you know you have good dining but uh, it's somewhere that's um overpriced and um you know you can you know the whole the whole french thing uh you know throws me off all the time and then that's the only that's the only thing about the country it's a beautiful country it's beautiful people and the food was decent it's just that that french thing man it's like golly i had, I had a hard time just ordering a pizza when i was there you know, but I, I did enjoy my but the Gambia, we really got we got we got some real fun in the Gambia. I ain't gonna even lie. And I saw you got a chance to meet with bag. I ain't I saw the pictures, I was like, oh man God, I feel left out now. Oh <laughs> uh, yes, that was a nice uh, connection right there. So I was able to connect with them. Yeah, they got the fence all painted. Did you get it? I ain't seen did you did you get any videos of the property? I ain't seen I ain't seen any, any videos of the property. No, I got three videos up the entire property. It's right there, it's right there. Right. They changed it now because it's been what two years, a couple years since we've been live. Since I've been live. Ah, uh, yes. Even the thumbnails are off the um the, the gate. It's, so I got three videos up on YouTube on my my, my last set of uploads. Yeah. Can't miss them. I miss I miss them. I got all the food growing over there now, man. It's like they. They doing their thing, boy. There you go. <laughs> that boy. Hold on, let me see if I can get you in here. Who's that? Another one of our travel mates. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. You got it, huh? Who is that? Try to say something. Try to say something, Jim. I want to learn how he made a million dollars. You want to learn how to make a million dollars? That old man with the beard. <laughs> oh, yeah, he love? said he made a million dollars working on the second million dollars. Oh, yeah, 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 he did. He, we, we talk a lot, so when he said that, yeah, I am I remember, I remember now. Yeah, you're right. He did say that, didn't he? Where'd he go? <laughs> he went to go collect another million. Huh? He left us. <laughs> hey, he left us already. <laughs> uh, he be steady messing with his phone and just started sitting it down. You just got to leave it alone once you get on. Because other than that, it'll knock you out. You see, right. you knock him out. What's up with you, man? Huh? What's up with you? Juma, greetings, brother. Greetings. I hope he can hear us. He act like he's, he's, he's looking yeah. like you don't know what's going on. Can you he's hear like, us? Now I can hear you loud and clear. Yeah. Well, I'm back in there. Your phone, man. Once you get it set, you got to just leave it alone. Hey, Touch Romani, what's up, brother? Greetings, you Juma. Greetings, yeah. You can yeah, hear us. Try to say something yeah. if we can hear you. Mr. Lovett? Yeah. Can everybody hear me? Okay, cool. Now, don't touch your phone no more. Leave it alone. I'm, if you touch, it's going to kick you out again. Uh-oh. Now we got some feedback. I'm on my computer. That's I'm on my phone. I don't know why it's doing that. There you go. I think it's kind of freezing. Juma, are, you, are you using a computer or are you using something else? There I'm on go. my cell phone. There you go, Juma. You're unfrozen now. Okay, I saw yeah. green, what's happening. Juma, you look confused like you can't hear us. Now he's freezing up again. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm good, man. You know. <laughs> yeah, you can't. That, yeah, you need to. Um, that desktop you're using, uh, it's not fast enough. That's one of them. Everywhere, everybody. Yeah, you know these things. Um, with this new technology and stream you just need good quality streaming. I new computer or new phone. I thought it was supposed okay. to be yeah, better. They said something about right. it's gonna be better now. I guess I don't know. This I ain't been on it in a while. It sounds like it's cool now. I guess. So how was the how was the Gambia? Yes, uh, the Gambia. Uh, Jim is disconnected. Uh, yes, the Gambia was there for, for four days. Uh, the hardest thing about uh, the Gambia is just uh, getting from Senegal to the Gambia. So, um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Whether, you, you, whether you're driving or flying, it's a, before you go too far. How did, how did you do it this time? Because you know, we, we took the bus last time. So yeah, I had to take the bus. Um, uh, the flight schedule uh, wasn't consistent, uh, to, to really make a you know, make a move, but um. I was able to work a new flight schedule for the future, but uh, we just did the scenic drive and decided to just tough it out, drive there and then drive back. Well, how was the border um, crossing experience? Uh, border crossing experience, that, that stuff is never, never, never a nice thing. Uh, it's just, you're, 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 you're just on the move and you're stopping and you're, you know, it's, it's, and it slows down your movement. It's not like, uh, you know, riding on I-95 and you just, you know, you just, you're going, you know, right, right, and you're right, moving. Right. Yeah, so from checkpoints to you know checkpoint security points to you know, going into Senegal, Senegal um, uh, border crossing and going to the Gambia and doing the same thing back and so on. So it just it just slows the time down of movements. So that's the only bad thing about it. But um, for the future, you know, we'll just wait till the evening, get on a flight, and then um, you know, because the flight get there the same time that you know you end up getting there if you drive. But okay. um, you just have more time in that country, so that's the only drawback. So uh, less, you know, yeah, less time in the country, or more time? In, yeah, more time in the country. Yeah, you'd have uh, yeah, and you'd have end up have more time. But then you know, when you do drive, you just see things that you're just not gonna see by just not driving around the country. Like that time when we was the, and we stopped and we when, when did we get off the tree, we got some. What was it? Uh, we took some off. What was that we took off the tree? I forget now. Um, Let's see where did we go? We yeah, but we uh, crossing the border. We stopped and picked up some off the trees. What was that we picked up off the trees? Um, I don't even remember. Oh yeah, uh, on the on the on the way going. Uh, cashew yeah, uh, was the cashew apples. That was the cashew apples. Yeah. Uh, so, and that yeah. was the uh, yeah, cashew apples. Nice. It's um. Uh, exactly. Exactly. A lot of a lot of beautiful things still grow there, but you know, got to get into the manufacturing and get into. Literally finding ways to, you know, to preserve you know the things that we have so they don't go to waste. Exactly, because they were just, I mean, miles and miles and miles of that stuff. Well, it's like going in the wild. Lord have mercy. And the animals were just having a field day. The, the the goats, the cows, the birds, the squirrels, everything was just. They was over there just singing. They was happy. <laughs> they was happy eating all that ground. Yeah, but the Gambia is always, always good. Uh, you know, we did a boat ride onto Jufri and uh, did that historical tour on uh, the Kunta Kente Island and uh, Breda. And, you know, that was that's always um, a nice, nice uh, journey as far as uh -huh. culture and history. Uh, and so so that was the, 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 the still the main attraction. We did go back to the Crocodile Pool and also did, uh, did a nice city tour. And uh, we went to the back family. I uh, went to the actual compound and stayed there for a while, a little longer than I expected. So we adjusted the schedule so we didn't have to rush. So people got a good time to sit down and talk. And you know, I just basically recorded everything and you know walked around the property and you know they did a tour of the property and did a few commentary while recording. So you know, great experience. And then one you know one day we just had an open day. Some people went shopping. The rest of us stayed at the beach resort called Senegambia Beach Hotel, and that was on the strip. You know, remember where Hard Rock was? That was like yeah. literally a quick walking distance from there. So every you know every evening we just go there to that strip and just you know go somewhere to a different restaurant. 
So that's the good thing about that location. But the resort itself yeah, has it's two very, pools. It's very, very convenient, that location. Yeah, so but, you know, the hotel was, you know, was right there. It's uh, two, uh, two, two pools, and during the daytime, it's just a whole bunch of fun and adventure. And you're right there on the beach. So you get to see the actual black sand beach. Now, where we were at, the beach color is a little, the sand is a little bit different before. Uh, this one is straight, straight jet black, and it's just a big resort. And a whole, whole, lot, whole lot of excitement. I mean, it just give you a chance to relax. And then for those who want to swim, you have you know, some real real pools, not a little kiddie pool. Real pool, right. like 10 feet deep, 10, 15 feet, 10, 12 feet deep. Oh, I know uh, little, so, little money was having a fail day, I know. Uh, yeah, you know, so you just get a better swim when you're in deep water. Absolutely, absolutely. Those, especially if you're not in the ocean, you know what I mean? At least, you know, but, but yeah, so that was one of those things. And it was a nice little, nice place to, you know, family. But only thing that, the only drawback is that she saw like about 90% white folks. And um, then, yeah, yeah. then, you know, then when you go out to the clubs and the bars, there's a whole bunch of white folks and young, looking looking for young black people. I'll put it that way to make it simple to people. Yeah, yeah, you gotta be, you gotta be uh, politically correct. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we don't, um, you know, wherever I go, it's the, still the same thing. You know, it's, 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 it's everybody else enjoying themselves, and you know, and then it's, so, it's some of us. So, but the good thing is, you know, we're seeing more and more of us. But uh, but that's uh, pretty much the Gambia. It's just, um, it's a vacation hotspot for um, a lot of older uh, white folks from Europe. And um, uh, when you're in Senegal, it's the same thing also. So pretty much that's what our continent looked like, family. Um, outside of some of the countries, it's just a lot more of other people vacationing and doing holiday and and just enjoying it. So love to just bring more of us there to connect, it, to just, uh, enjoy the experience. And that's the same thing in Tanzania when we was in Tanzania. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, yeah. So, and then, you know, when we're in Ghana, it's kind of like Black Haven. Yeah, that's kind of that. Uh, Ghana remind me. Of, it, it kind of reminds me of uh, Atlanta. It's like a, Atlanta to America. That's what Ghana reminds me. Of. It's like the, the Atlanta of, of uh, Africa. Oh yeah, yeah. Because mostly what you're gonna see when you go to certain places. I mean, I guess if I went to the certain places that I went to in, in the Gambia and in, in Ghana, I'll probably see a little more more other people. But even so, I mean, Ghana is pretty much just like you mentioned. Just you know, just to compare different cities. You know, give you the Atlanta feel where you just feel like you're somewhere, you know, you know in a black society. Exactly. Predominant. Right. So, like a black mecca. That's what it's going to turn it into. But, you know, we're just saying folks know that uh, different parts of Africa, different experience, uh, but that's what makes it so great. And then, you know, just find the best place that you can make some moves at. But, uh, yeah, Senegal and Gambia, I'm glad that journey worked out. So we'll redo it again in 2025. And then... um. Cause I, you know, I got dates for other countries you know, all in 2024 so we definitely see especially if people are interested we can just you know move it up a little faster i may have one another you know, another date i can use but it's all based on interest and based on who want to travel and connect with us um, and that's well, strictly it uh, you know we have we have the we have the crew in every country that we go to at least eight country deep um we have the you know we have the program already written and set up or you know, we can just modify one of the programs and make it work there. And as far as programs, it's uh, it's actually the itinerary. So, um, incredible itinerary. So, based on what people are interested in, we'll just literally just keep on taking them there. So, that is the goal. But, um, you know, we have a nice schedule in Ghana. But if you want to, go, if this date still work in Ghana, you just want to still go somewhere in Africa. You know, we have these other countries. Like, I don't have a summer journey, but we have a summer journey to Rwanda. And, um, you know, it's right in the middle of summer. Everybody's, you know, uh, out of uh, school and uh, it's your vacation holiday time. And all we just need is a nice group of people and, we, we, you know, we're, we're all set. So that's July 20th to the 30th. So we have a good uh, three, um, what was that, good uh, three months. So it yeah, is uh, not too late. It's actually a good time to get people ready to go. That's the two I want to talk about because that is one of the countries that were really on my list because it's, it was voted the cleanest country in Africa. So I definitely want to see that. And it's supposed to be like a technological hub too for Africa. So I want to see what that's about as well. Um, so yeah, let's talk more about the Luanda trip because- Yeah, if you want to- I can do 
I can do screen sharing. I got the screen sharing up. Just, okay, how do we? I gotta just add it. Uh, yes, and um, here we go. I do. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. You can see that. So, for those who are, who are interested in um, our Africa for Africans uh, program, our website is Africa for Africans.org. And since we're talking about the uh, Rwanda journey of a lifetime, once you go to our website, uh, what you see is our MP3 player on the left. And then uh, you'll see you see a slideshow in the middle of the page. And this is only this is only if you're on a desktop or a laptop. If you're on a, if you're on a portable device, uh, it will just uh, be different. This part won't show. You just see the rest of the website. Uh, so this is our presentation, um, and uh, that's uh, 17 years of traveling to. Ten, um, well, uh, 19 years of traveling to 10 different African countries and uh, the 17 years represent us in business and that covers about a good uh, eight country. So what you see is this uh, pictures from between 2006 to 2023 and most of the pictures are uh, newer pictures. So once you scroll down the website, you look to the left, uh, you'll see um, a few important documents and then you'll see the tour, the tour pages or the tour uh, schedules. So uh, what we'll do is I'll scroll all the way down to where you see Rwanda, and it'll say Rwanda Roots and Culture Tour, July 20th to the 30th, 2023. And it's the same thing that you'll see on the um, main menu to your left. So either link you click on, All right, so once you click on a link, uh, what you're gonna see uh -huh. is uh, all of the supporting documents, uh, overview, itinerary, general terms, visa, and uh, departure reminder information uh, preparation list. So these are the documents that we have to get you prepared and clear. And the first one we click on is uh, overview. So that gives you all of uh, the prices, what's included, what's not included, and the overview of um, the different uh, places that we're going to be going to. So that's the quickest and most uh, direct thing that we can go to. And there you go, family. That is the dates. Rwanda Roots and Culture Tour, July 20th to the 30th, 2023. So this is the price for the uh, tour package and uh, and this uh, this includes your flights from the US uh, to uh, to Rwanda and back and we're using the KLM so example if you're in New York or Atlanta your flight will leave from New York Atlanta and it will connect to Amsterdam and then once you're in Amsterdam um, all of us will meet up and then our flight goes directly on KLM in Amsterdam directly to Kigali so that is uh, our schedule, and then for someone who just want to, you know, make their own uh, flight schedule, you can pay for the uh, the, uh, the land accommodation package, and then uh, you'll just be responsible for your own your all of your flights, uh, and that's uh, the two packages that we have. And then if the optional one is uh, it's a uh, double occupancy, so if you want a single room, uh, that's your single supplement. Yeah, that means you got, you're going to have to pay more if you want to be in a single room, people, for folks who haven't traveled yet. Yeah, so, so as it shows you right here, tours included, um, three and four star hotel, accommodation, double occupancy. So that's what that means, like a brother just mentioned, two people to a room. And if you want to be in a room by yourself, you can just pay for the uh, single package, optional. All right. So uh, what else is including the tour? There's a whole lot of uh, social uh, gathering uh, and uh, looking to um, just put us in the world of this uh, social business networking, especially for those who want to be interested in uh, doing business or just want to open their mind. And the tour package includes uh, transportation and tours throughout Rwanda, daily continental breakfast and gourmet dinner, uh, entrance and access to our sites and activities, and a certified English speaking tour guide. And then our looking for volunteers or those who want to do exercise or meditation uh, that's a uh, volunteer base 
And um, if no one wants to volunteer, you just want to come out and stretch exercise. It's basically what we are just encouraging. And if we can get someone to do a few lessons, then we'll do it. So that's uh, what's included. And what's not included is a hundred dollar group tips, uh, lunch, and uh, visa. So the only meal that's not included is uh, the uh, lunch. So our goal is to get you somewhere where you can just order what you need to order, and then we we'll just continue on the tour schedule. I guess it's a good question to ask right there would be uh, for folks who have alternative diets. I'm sure we're going to have accommodations for that. So I guess we can address that at this time. Um, yeah. So, I mean, if you're, it's just like dinner, I either do a, a dinner buffet based on people diet or you give everyone a menu and then they order what they want based on that menu. And then if they need to get the, uh, the orders specific to certain things, they can just explain that to, the person taking the order and things like that so that's as simple as i can make it to where you're not getting caught up in a situation where you know uh, you're somewhere eating lunch or eating dinner and you know it's just a bunch of things that you can't eat and that's the kind of stuff stuff you have to be careful if you're just in synagogue and again because that can happen not a, not exactly at a restaurant but if somebody invites you to eat dinner like i explained to you know i'm always explaining to our, our, our host that there's people who are vegan, vegetarians, and people that don't eat certain things, and it's just what it is. I'm not here to argue, you know, argue with people. Eat. We're here to accommodate people. That's why I explain to them because sometimes you go places and people want you to eat what you want. They want you to eat what they want you to eat. What they cook. <laughs> and, and they want you to eat the way they eat, and it's not exactly that simple. If it's just, brother, if it's just you and I traveling somewhere and we're going to go hang out with a family, you know what I'm saying? Because I've been there, you know, you just, you know, maybe they have some, you know, I mean, you know, we, we just explain to them still, still the same situation. And, you know, and we could probably sit on the floor and we could do certain things. But, uh, you know, some people do do certain hardcore experience and it's what it is. Um, um, I tend to just try to just try to accommodate people because I know what people are looking for as far as their level of comfort. They're open to trying certain things, but they want their main thing is the level of comfort. So when it comes to their, their serious meals, like their lunch and their dinner, you know, they just literally just want to order the things that they want to eat. And then you encourage people to just try you know, things as local or traditional and cultural as possible. And you try to infuse that in uh, any you know, any dinner as best as possible. And um, you know, make it to where you know, you're, you know, you're good. So when people ask me, what do we eat in Africa? I explain to them. You know, a combination of the things that you're used to eating along with different flavors and style of how things are cooked. But you get to pick and select what you want to eat. And no, no one is forcing you to try things that you don't need to eat. Because um, the, the reality of that, and uh, sometimes people that are host union is not looking at that, is like, what if you get sick, which is a very, very high chance you'll get sick. And, and especially if you don't eat meat and then someone gives some jollof rice with some beef in there, something like that. Because you know? that's one thing you always have to just ask people when they're cooking rice. Because you know? how people do that, I mean, I, and you know, I come from a world of where when you're cooking for when you're cooking for people, you cook based on the people that you're cooking for. You're not cooking for your you know your folks locally. You're cooking for people, who, you know, may have certain diets. So that's how I work those things out um, and make it nice and simple. And we did great uh, eight out of the ten days, um, eight out of eight out of the ten dinners that we had. Um, but I made an adjustment on one, so it ended up being nine. So that's uh, that's always uh, good. But I'll scroll them down, but definitely want to make sure people understand that you are going to enjoy great dining. And, you know, definitely big on great dining and just great tour experience and you know, incredible nightlife for those who want to socialize at nighttime. All right, so the yeah, six days that we go, go ahead. I was going to say, talk more about the nightlife because folks ain't never really party like that in Africa. So I'm sure they will be interested in, to hear about the nightlife. Yeah, the nightlife is not a hardcore party because we do want you to get up the next morning to go out with us uh, on tour. But, you know, but so we don't want you to be uh, having too much fun to where you can't make it up the morning. But uh, it's more mainly, um, you know, just like I talk about social business networking, it is more of a social gathering where you just, you know, sometimes you're just out of a club or bar or somewhere simple and you just socialize and you're taking in the scenes yeah, you know, you're having a drink or two and you just enjoying the atmosphere. And you know, for those who want to dance, you know, maybe at a spot where you can just dance or just enjoy a show. But 
Uh, usually it's just a different uh, scenery and it's just, um, you know, you encourage it so we can just, you know, that way you can just get a feel for what the country is doing the all aspects of the, you know, the, 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 your time there, day and night, you know, you get aspects of just being in Kigali, being out there in the countryside by the lake, going out there on boats. Uh, so, uh, the, you know, the nightlife is, uh, is is that kind of experience uh, where, you know, again, it's not like hardcore, but it's just, it's, it's real, it's real fun, real social and, you know, it's, you know, it's a nice little get out. You don't have to worry about uh, driving or anything. You know, and for those who, you know, a lot of times you go and you got to worry about driving. You know, you know, we have our vehicles and, you know, you can just click on your Uber app or whatever uh, ride sharing app and, you know, we can make our way around or we can also get a um, uh, driver to drop us off and do things like that. So, and then it's an environment where you're around us uh, all together. So, you know, and you're around our hosts and people so it's a nice safe environment and you know we're going to make sure that uh, you're good but um you know the last time we was on i think uh, we was in um i, I want to say it was in tanzania you know uh, but every country you go to this offers this incredible nightlife so come out check it out um and that's why we write tour itineraries can we write a tour itinerary if you're literally incorporating all of the most uh all aspects of this uh, being in the country. So that's just definitely one. Uh, I try to put up a few videos here and there, uh, but sometimes you know, we just not even focus on shooting uh, night videos. But when we do, uh, you know, I have a few on Instagram and a few on YouTube itself, but um, but you know, take some more. But um, that is uh, another part of the, the country where we tell you this: don't just let us drop you off in the evening, and then you just uh, stay in the hotel and just. You know, eat your dinner and then just go to bed. And that's why I try to take us out for dinner at certain certain nights where we also have after the dinner, there's a nice little social environment. And for those who want to go back and go back to the hotel. And then for those who want to stay, they can also stay. Uh, so it's just, you know, it's a real, uh, you know, wonderful itinerary. Just want to make sure that you have lots of fun in the country, but also you have to just make sure that uh, you're well rested or if you or make sure that you maybe just be open to less rest. And so you can enjoy more and then, you know, you can rest up when you return back to your home. Exactly. So, so these are a list of things that we have. Uh, it's a bunch of different museums and um, we have to make some adjustments to some of this. But this is also you now six days that we are in, we are in Kigali. So uh, the Kigali uh, sightseeing city tour, uh, we have a few different places of art. So uh, a few different uh, art galleries. I would do our best to do all three of them, but um, I'm literally trying to find the best two out of all three of them and then just locking on it. So we have, we have things coordinated that way. We're not moving all over the place in the country. So some of the things may just be adjusted because if they're, they're close together, we can just do different segments of, of the few days that we're driving around. So the goal is to cover as much as possible and uh, not overkill you with, um, you know, with genocide museums uh, so i had to just look back to the schedule and make sure that we're not overdoing it because they have some incredible museums and just going to select a few of them out so what we have is um a kind house uh, museum belden peacekeeper memorial and some of these things also is not you're just not going to spend a whole lot of time in them it may be a short presentation uh Kigalia Convention Center, uh, that's like a drive through to sort of showcase the development um, in doing a city tour. Uh, Camp Kigali Memorial, uh, Kigali Genocide uh, Memorial, Campaign Against Genocide Museum. So those are the few museums dedicated to um, the Rwanda uh, genocide. So that's, um, you know, we'll organize that to where you, know, you can have a experience because part of the journey that we have uh, you know, beyond this roots culture, business investment, nightlife, shopping, networking, is part of us dealing with the African Holocaust or some level of African Holocaust. And that's just to, uh, you know, convey in our mind about not taking things for granted and literally just putting ourselves in a position where, you know, we never do these things again to each other. And it's just something that, you know, it's important that we just play in our mind. So, you know, whatever country I go to, we'll find, you know, I usually find something to put on this, the schedule, uh, itinerary to this, uh, you know, pay our respect to you know, uh, our fallen, you know, fallen brothers and sisters, um, and just you know, and keep the energy strong. Uh, so we have also a national park. I uh, try to incorporate more of these national parks uh, in countries, especially when we go into East or Southern Africa. And then there's you know, 
make our way out uh, out of the main city for an hour or so and then just enjoy nature. <laughs> Right, so that so that is that one so and that's um that's a day trip and that's usually what it is when you do these uh, parks because it's a one two hour drive plus just being out in the park for a few hours and then uh, we talk about Kigali nightlife and uh, business investment networking and we're lodging at uh, let's, talk about, let's talk about that uh business and networking because I'm sure people will want to be interested in what kind of opportunities that might be uh, available for them in the country. Now you're just doing something basic. Um, you're having a few people talk about the uh, business opportunities in the country and how you register business, start business, and some of the highlights are interested markets that are available. That's something basic to give people an open mind as far as just uh, uh, just being there in an African continent and the possibilities. Uh, so this, and that you know, and all of this honestly, uh, everything honestly just depends on the amount of people that we have. And the amount of interest that we have, um, so because that naturally draws the people that we need to get to, to to do the different parts of the program. Especially if, like, example, if we have uh, you know a lot of business people that's interested in doing many things, you know, and then that set itself to where you know we get more people to doing that, and we have a lot more people that want certain things. So, family, these journeys are built based on energy of those of us coming. Um, the program itself, you know, you have it in place, but you know. The more people that we have focused on certain things, the more we can just give time for that. Just like, you know, we have a whole lot of sisters there and they just want to shop more. And we just make adjustment to shop. But want to get more business people uh, connected to different parts of Africa to just see the vast opportunities. Because when I go to different countries, all I see is lots of just other people. Uh, you know, the Lebanese is like, you know, they're, East Africa is like this their haven as far as just them just enterprising. And you go to, um, you know, Excuse me. Uh, West Africa is a haven for like uh, Lebanese. Oh, and they they go to East Africa. East Africa. I was like East Africa. I thought it was West Africa is where they really at. But yeah, and you go to East Africa is more of the Indians and so on. And then you know, they there go. full of uh, all different type of people, uh, foreigners. You can just uh, call them as, uh, and they're literally just um, making moves that you now see us in America. You know, that have the skills, the background can make the move. The only difference is you know, these are more organized groups of people organized nations of people that this is what they do they you know they their goal is to seek greater opportunities especially in asian countries the asian countries are literally overpacked to where um you know they're they're seeking out greater opportunities and the government is set they're backed by the government so that's another disadvantage that we have uh we're not exactly backed by any government or any people who talk big and then they, they you know just give a certain support so um just trying to share and expose as many things as possible and just put it out there. So that's yeah, what we're looking to do, family. Let me, let me jump in right there because people sure. be always asking these questions on uh, the Chinese are this and that these people are taking over Africa. Well, the, the reason why these folks are going to these African nations is for greater opportunity and, and advancement. The reason, what, what, the reason why we keep saying these things is because we're not doing what it takes to go there to compete. That's all we have to do. We worry about what other folks are doing when we should be taking the initiative to go over there and compete, right? We have a lot more advantages to compete against these people because one, we we look like the people that's there in the, in the country. So we look like the majority, right? We have education. Some of us got a few dollars to rub together. We have some know-how, we have certain skills, right? And then we have a cultural awareness about the co about the culture there and we love the culture there so you know we have to go there and compete we can't keep saying well the chinese this the chinese that and then we're not lifting a finger to go over there to compete i just want to just throw that in right there absolutely brother uh absolutely that's um <laughs> um i mean i i mean if, you, you, uh, none of us can blame any of these uh people they, you know these people are very ambitious and I mean, they just see great opportunities that, um, you know, like while we're vacationing and having our reconnection journey in Africa, they're, they're, they're trying to make some gold and some diamond deals or they're trying to, you know, do investment and do um, development projects. Uh, so, 
it's um it's a whole different level but uh you know we're the people who get there also it's just we just have to speed it up and part of getting us more interested in africa is just going on some of these journeys um and going with around a group of people where you know not everybody may just have the same vision all together but you know one or two of us will connect together and then we'll figure out things that uh, figure out how we can do things together and figure out how we could just uh, move more as a union and be more impactful so uh, a lot come from this energy of just making these moves to africa it's a very uh strategic and tactical uh move uh doing our repatriation and investment tours uh, it is you know it has built an incredible future for us in ghana and while we're building that future you know trying to expand energy to other countries to where we could just get people connected because you know everyone is not all going to be all this interested in one country uh, right. People have different things that they're looking for. Some people are looking for somewhere where it's you know the weather's a little cooler, so they may you know, like the southern part of Africa. Some people may just like it very very hot and dry, and they want to move to North Africa. But you know, and then you know they might maybe like us. You know, we love the tropical atmosphere in West Africa. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Let, me, nice. <laughs> let me chime. Let me chime in, gentlemen. And uh, that was, I like to carry on what Bomani said during his observation when he was giving his, uh, his, uh, spill on his, what he had seen in his trips. And the number one thing he said that I caught on was those groups work together, group economics. So we're going to have to d develop, I think, a passion for working with each other. You know, like you say, we bring a lot of skills to the table, different level of skills and uh, different types of uh, lights. You know, not everybody will like the warm climate. Some people like a cooler climate. But no matter where we are on the continent, working together as a group, that's, I think that's uh, was very important intuitive what you said that's all i had to say who back on numbers yes but i'm just uh making our way around the african continent just making our way around and just giving people a good feel of what's going on and that's the that's what you see it's hard to just not see it no? you know there's different uh nations of people enterprise and doing the things that uh we could be doing and expanding our brand from there yeah? From, from the Americas or from America to Africa. So, um, you know, we'll just keep on showing and keep on just pushing the energy. And, and then for those who want to just join in, don't don't wait till it's too late because uh, they're, they're waiting right. for five years. Wait. You know what I'm saying? The Chinese own everything. The Chinese run Africa. The Chinese, there's a Chinese that Exactly. Don't wait till it's too late and then don't be running your mouth talking about the Chinese this and the Chinese that and you ain't got up off the couch. You're just sitting here watching YouTube, watching us go have fun and you ain't tried to come and at least visit the country to see what the opportunity does. So I bet not hear nobody run their mouth because if you run your mouth and you ain't been to Africa, I'm going to check you. Simple as that. I'm going to check you because I'm going to say first thing, you better not bring up about what the Chinese are doing. Those if them people are coming from uh, uh, poor villages in their nations, and they look, they seeking out better opportunity. And who are you to say anything when you haven't even got up off the couch and at least visit one African nation to see if it is opportunities for you? So just keep that in mind. If I if I get a little, you know, a little salty at you if you start mentioning the Chinese too many times, <laughs> anybody else for that matter? Uh, people come up with all kind of reasons to not do anything. I mean, exactly. like, you know, so whoever, whoever is uh, the dominant force in Africa, you, know, um, you can complain about the same set of people here, um, you know, whether it's the Mexicans taking advantage of the opportunities or somebody else. Um, you know, it, does, it can't just be about uh, complaining about other people that are progressive and other people that are doing the things that you need to be doing, we need to be doing as a people. It, it's just kind of like the senseless and this. You know, these are the folks that just dry, dry your energy. And I tell them that, you know, I mean, the best thing to do, you know, this, you know, it, it's free to watch the website. It's free to watch the YouTube stuff on YouTube and Facebook. So just enjoy it. But if you're going to connect with us, be serious and be ready. Because what the, the, the worst thing is when I understand one or two people can call you to, and, and it's that way. But the worst thing is you have a bunch of people you're dealing with and they give you reason and excuses. For me personally, if you're going to give somebody reason and excuses, you don't have to even call them. 
I mean, uh, but you know, when you call me, I'm going to give you my all and spend my time and help you get things and be clear. But it's like, at this point, when you're calling me, I'm, you know, the, the notion to me is that you, you have, you're ready to, you know, you're ready for business. Exactly. Same here. If you call me or if you email me, be serious, have your passport, right? Have some money where you you can at least get on a payment plan. You know what I mean? Uh, because, I mean, me and the brother are teaming up. And so we want to generate as much support for these trips as possible. Because if you plan to retire and you want to retire in Africa, maybe this is a dream of yours. First thing you got to do to fulfill this dream, you got to visit first. That will be your smart way of doing this. Visit the country first. Go with people who are experienced. The brother just said he's been 19 times. I've been 14. He's been over 19. He said 19? It's been 30 times, right? I've been to the African continent as far as the tours that we've done. I've done over 30 tours. There you uh, go. As far as um, you know, the tour schedule itself. So but as far as this, um, in countries like Ghana, I've been there 22 times alone. Uh, you know, so now it's a lot, of, a lot of things to go with is somebody that's been 22 times. Yeah, that's just one country. Exactly. Uh, so. That's who you want to go with. You don't want to go with some people who – they, they just started tour business yesterday, and then you want to go with them. When when here we got a, a very very experienced brother who has, I mean, tons of connections in these countries, can pretty much get anything we need done done. So uh, we really ain't got no excuses. We need to be able to use these resources while they're still available. So visit first. But well, go ahead, Bobani. Uh, but yes, and that's why I'm always telling people that um, you know. Just, a lot of work into the, the website and the history of it uh to just put enough information on there and then the youtube page itself i mean everything wherever we travel you know this we're just shooting videos and it may not be uh you know, the greatest video but it's, it's a video that's giving you a, hi a highlight it's a video that's giving you this uh letting you just get a feeling to see all the things that we're doing and so it's um and then you know for photos this even when I was looking back on my Facebook, it's just every single tour that we have had there, just, they're just photo galleries. And then all the links on the website. Uh, so once they take a look at it, uh, you know, it's easy to just go ahead and compare uh, to what someone else is doing, whether they want to compare the numbers or the actual itinerary or, you know, things like that. And then, you know, reach out, uh, we talk, and then we just get you locked in. And, you know, that's what I'm doing. I'm working on this booking. A bunch of different tour schedules uh, throughout the time frame. You know, people ask me, how do you get all these people to travel with you? Because when people are calling me, I'm getting right to the point with them and let them know that this is, you know, this is what we have and this is what we're doing. And just came back from one journey and getting ready to go on another one. And these are the ones we have available. So uh, here's the information. Um, let's do a follow up. And then from there, we'll just get you locked in one, two, three. And if it's uh, anything other than that, it just becomes too painful. And so on. So I've had a lot of people say they want to go to Rwanda with us uh, over the last two years. And I told them uh, that I would uh, work it on the schedule. And then now we got it on the schedule. And the same people who mentioned that I'm um, reaching back out to them. So hopefully we get some more of them to connect with us. Other than that, you know, we'll, uh, you know, other than that, you know, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll miss this one. And then we'll see if we can just add another one another time. Uh, but, um, the best time is always uh, now in the present time. Yeah, so yeah, we can yeah, always do something else in the future. But yeah, the time, you know, we can't wait for you. <laughs> yeah, just like God, I started going in, you know, in, in 2006. And a lot of people say that they want to roll me the, the first few years and things. And I, and I, 15 years later, I, and I haven't seen them. But, you know, tell them it's all good. It's, um, you know, it's just, you know, it's just something we put together, a real program that our goal is to give you the best out of it. And then, you know, when you decide to stay in the country, we're not leaving you by yourself. You're there with our, you know, our hosts and the people that we connected you with. And then if you decide to come back, you got new friends, new people to connect with. When you get back to America, you may, may, may have new friends also. So it's, um, it's, a, it's a situation where we have a program put together to where we can, you know, we can we're working and building networking with other black people, black owned business in the country. Uh, we're putting on other uh, young brothers like all the countries that we've traveled to, we'll put a lot of, you know, a lot of people on to where, you know, we're working with them. And even sometimes, uh, you know, we send people or send small groups and try to just support the energy. And, you know, and together we can really pull this off to where, you know, we're the people dominating the tourism sector 
because it's, it's 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 crazy it's crazy that um that this is this is africa and this is our continent but even the the tourism business like when especially when you go to like southern africa or east africa it's just everybody else that's in position to you know whether they fl- whether they fly in those small jets or whether they have a, a, you know, a bed and breakfast or they have a, a hotel or whether they you know they own a line of bus uh you know it's um usually in the, the, the top aspect of it uh you know we're missing out um you know like south africa like even if you just think about south africa alone uh there's a whole bunch of other people that's in that business even safaris i got yeah. one of my good um my, my crew in tanzania they've you know they've proven it to me over and over uh you know because they're in, involved in the whole safari world but when you get out into that world it's just you know you're missing a lot of us and usually we're the people that's doing the work and things like that uh but uh, not so much um running certain things or having certain ownership. Uh, so all of that could change. Uh, it's a great opportunity. And the more and more of us that travel build that experience, now we can also individually get into those business and work together with other people. Uh, so it's um, it's a great uh, you know future vision in that. And as we build the energy and tourism in one country, you know, uh, other countries that are developing their tourist base, you now we'll go and work with them and build tour programs. And then the tour programs is uh, incredible because it just opens you up to other things. It's hard to think about that I want to go to Africa to invest and live and do business and all those things when, you know, I haven't been able to this evening just get connected to the country. You know, yes, you can just go to a country and check it out. But um, touring a country is an educational thing also along with it's a social connection with the country. So it would just you know, give you more you know, clarity if you just want to do something. Absolutely. And talk about something. Um, this is something special right here. Jiseni, uh, uh, Lake Kivu. That's three days. So we we'll drive a few hours across to um, this side, which is closer to the Congo. And then uh, we're going to be staying at uh, Paradise Kivu uh, uh, Resort uh, or Lake Resort. So you're right there on the lake. Uh, so we have a whole lot of things to do. Not a whole lot of things to do. This is more of your relaxing time kickback time okay. so the things that uh we have there um you know boat rides um go you know, take a boat over go visit a tea plantation uh coffee plantation uh we do a city tour uh drive you know close to the border of the congo uh water sports on the lake and then just enjoy some you know, nice nightlife also uh so and then just relax and enjoy the resort and especially before we make our return to Kigali, before we return back to our uh, return, uh, place of return. So this is um, six days in Kigali and uh, three days in uh, Jiseni at Lake Kivu. So that's uh, the makeup of this itinerary for Rwanda. And as time go along, who knows how we will work the itinerary, but uh, wanted to make sure that we put now, I thought about another city, but uh, it was just ideal to just, just work from right here. And we can always see how things go in the future. But uh, this gives you a good scope of all of the um, the things that would just connect you to a nice roots and culture tour. And then accommodations, we make sure we just have you some real nice accommodations. Uh, so, and then, you know, if you want to see what the hotels look like, just click on the link and you can check them out and you can see. And we've stepped our game up to provide you something that's uh, an incredible experience. So that is uh, the tour overview while we're talking. And that's on our website, Africa for the Africans.org. And also once you click back, once you click back on this link here, it will give you access to some more, give you access to some more, uh, for, you know, the, the files will just reload. But that was the overview. So now we could just even click on the itinerary. And based on the things that I talked about, what's included in um, Kigali and uh, Jiseni, what you're looking at is you are looking at um, just a day to day flow. That's what one does. Uh, yes, so that is it right there. Hopefully you can see it nice and clear. That's a day to day flow. And day one is basically saying that um, you know, wherever you know, if you're leaving from Atlanta, you, that's the time frame you leave, and then your flight connects to Amsterdam. And if you're leaving from New York, Seattle, or anywhere else, your flight is going to get you to Amsterdam. 
And so that's what we have set up to make it simple. And then your bookings are all on Delta Airlines slash KLM. It's booked to Delta Airlines uh, or KLM. Uh, so that is uh, the setup to this, uh, get you uh, to Amsterdam. And the next day, all of us leave from Amsterdam to Kigali. So wherever you are, if you're in Europe, if you're somewhere else, um, all your flights to just meet there because that's only one flight on uh, KLM that's going to take you to Kigali. So that's the uh, first two days of the itinerary. And so family, once again, all these things are just on our website, nice and organized for you to flow it. All you have to do is click on the link and then just navigate through the tour information. All right, so that is uh, the first two days. Uh, when we actually get there, um, it's actually going to be in the nighttime. So by the time you get your bags and everything to the hotel, you're looking at this um, you know, maybe uh, 9 o'clock or so. So, you know, we just get you checked in, uh, get you settled. Uh, you know, if you just want to just enjoy the, you know, and enjoy the, uh, the energy while you're there uh, for, for this Friday night, uh, enjoy. And then we just pick up back in the morning, Saturday for uh, Kigali sightseeing. And then we have a few uh, genocide memorial. So that's what we're going to be doing this. Um, that's going to be one of those um, days where, you know, we leave out about uh, 8.30, 9 o'clock and we come back about 5.00. That's usually the set day schedule. You know, we're out for a full day. And then Sunday, uh, I'll talk about the National Park. Uh, we don't go just to get up early, head out to the National Park and just enjoy the, uh, you know, enjoy the tropical, enjoy the, um, the rural setting and just enjoy nature. Uh, Day five, Monday, that's a Roots and Culture City Tour and a Women's Center. So we also have uh, all of these arts and culture places. Uh, so between the city tour and uh, this day, you see more of the city and more of these different uh, shops and stores and um, museums. Uh, Tuesday, that's a free day. So if you just want to do more shopping, if you just want to kick back at uh, that Nice hotel and just uh, relax and enjoy, get massages or anything that you want to get uh, taken care of. You know, you're at the place where you can enjoy your relaxation. Now, the next day is when we go out to Jeseni. So that is looking at about a four hour ride. And that's our uh, day seven, four hour ride. And once we get there, we're just going to relax and just enjoy our time in the resort. Uh, day eight Thursday, and that is just going to be the we have two tour days. That's just going to be one tour where we just visit three different islands, and we're going to be going fishing. Taking, we're going to take the well, not fishing, you can do fishing as best as you, you can, but we're just taking the boats out and driving around the different islands. Uh, day nine, uh, Friday, uh, July 28th, uh, we're just going to do a city tour slash hot springs and just make our way around. Uh, you know the small, you know the small town or small city, and that will, then the next day is this uh, day we get to getting ready to close out so we can get ready for our flight to Amsterdam. So by the time you turn around, family, uh, the, the, the days go by, but that is nine days in Rwanda uh, on this uh, incredible eleven-day itinerary. Uh, the first and last days are your, your flight days, and uh, then you have nine days in the country. So this is our setup to the side, give you this an incredible experience. So just make sure you take your time and visit our website, africaforafricans.org, and then you can just see all of this uh, information and be prepared. Absolutely. And if you have any questions, make sure you either email me or just leave me a comment in the comment section, and then make sure uh, if you do go to the brother's site that you heard about us talking about these tours and the things that we've been talking about uh, over here. So he has some frame of reference on where we're getting people from because we're trying to generate as many um, new new people as we can because, I mean, they're, they're trying to literally, so it's basically a race for Africa. So we need to intensify our efforts because we need to be involved in this race. We need to be involved with this race. Everybody's having to renew energies uh, talking about Africa. Uh, I see the French is talking about uh, people in uh, Belgium, the, the English, now they got the Chinese, the Russians, and the Americans. So everybody's 
have this renewed energy and concern about Africa, right? Because they're concerned about uh, who is going to um, interact with Africa over the next millennium. So we need to be in that conversation. So we need to be coming together and combining our forces, right? And generating as much activity and as much support for these nations as we can so we can be in, uh, ahead of some of these opportunities. So you make sure you let uh, you let me know. And if you if you go to the brother's site, make sure that you tell him that you heard about uh, these conversations we're having and, and make sure so we can kind of document where we're getting people from. Because we need to know that so we can put more of our efforts into these particular programs so we, we won't be just burning our burning our wheels in, in areas where people are not really uh, participating. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's what we're looking to do, get you on the journey of a lifetime Africa. Uh, spend some of this dollars in some black hands in Africa. Yeah. Let's build our global black economy, our global black business pipeline. Exactly. And we don't have to leave america 100 percent you know a lot of us getting our money here we got our education here we got our uh, extended family here we can just have a pipeline we still can get goods we can we can bring over raw materials we can bring over equipment right you still got your family over here that can ship things back and forth so what's wrong with us being global um what i want to say global merchants okay global business people that's what we should be concerned with I want to move this, move this mic right quick. So that way we have some connections because that's what the Chinese are doing. You know, you go there, you see a lot of Chinese products and where they get these products from, they're getting it from China. So we can do the same thing. We got a lot of uh, resources here in, in the U.S. and you got family here. And if you are in Africa, why couldn't you get your family here to ship products, to ship uh, equipment, raw materials over to Africa so we can do some things? build some stuff same thing they're doing we could do but 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 we have a advantage is because we look like the people on the ground and we can identify with the culture and we can identify with the people we can identify with the food so we have a actually a leg up so we need to we need to exploit that we really do you want to add something to that about money uh, yes, absolutely, family, and that's why we need uh, your energy to join us uh, because uh, strength in numbers make a difference. Now, if we show up to the African continent with a whole lot of people and we're doing different things, it changes the then dynamics of our connection. But if we just sit back here as spectators, or if we just go and just uh, you know you just just going you know you're going and just you know you're you're doing something small or just uh, you just maybe just enjoying vacation and coming back, um, you know. It's, well, I mean, by you going there and even enjoying vacation, it makes, you know, it makes a world of a difference. But um, everything is based on movement. So that's why we have all this uh, schedule and um, availability. Even if you just can't come with us and you just need to something organized, just we have things that we can just get uh, connected for you. Uh, so, but the more of us can get to the content and the more of us can show the things that we're doing and put our energy together, you know, these things have changed change the dynamics of things over the period of time so it's just up to us to make the difference uh, other than that everyone else is just going to keep on doing what they're doing and then we're just going to be the ones looking from the outside in so yes brother ready for the journey of a lifetime so how much uh people do you think we have in this chat that's ready to go a lot of different names. Our family, so who is interested in Rwanda? At least, you know, give us a message or something. Let me see if we have any potential people who are open or if it uh, sounds good to you. And if you just rather go somewhere else other than Rwanda, you know, how about you just post where you rather go? Yeah. 
All right, Mr. Lothan, can you hear me? You still there also? Yes, I hear you. Okay, Go ahead. You're, you're, you're here, perfect. Yes. Um. So um. You won't. You um. You won't make Rwanda, but uh, you're looking to make uh, Egypt. Is that what it is? Because we got to most, most definitely. I'd be there with bells on my toes. So there's the Egypt dates right there. So family, all, all these dates uh, for the journeys that we have. Um. Uh, every few months we have a different journey, different country. That's it, right oh, yeah. there. Egypt. Um, encourage everyone to look at information now and then be prepared ahead of time and then uh, get committed and uh, so we can build the numbers up and get you on these journeys oh yeah that's going to be fun Egypt yes so there you go family the journey of a lifetime takes you all over Africa North, east, south, west, yeah. and it continues and don't stop. And as far as uh, Egypt, yes, we take it to the Nile Valley civilization from Cairo, Luxor, uh, Aswan, Abu Simbel, uh, the popular cities along the Nile Valley, and circle cities. Then we take you out to the uh, Red Sea, yeah, uh, the, uh, the busy, busy area over there. Uh, but uh, go to the yeah. A good feel of the uh, African continent, and then since we're talking about Egypt, let's give you a good feel of just that history. And then also, while we're there in Egypt, you know, we're going to be cruising on the Nile, so we're going to take one of those uh, cruise ships from uh, Aswan to Luxor. So that's about you know two three days on that cruise ship. Nice, nice experience. Um, I experienced that Egypt journey oh, in 2004, okay. 19 years ago. And so we're looking to do it. It's the 20th anniversary journey of you know, 20 years traveling to Africa, 20 years going to Egypt. Yeah. So that's uh, what that represent there. So family, uh, these are all things that we have experienced. And uh, when we put together a tour program, the goal is to just make it uh, logistically efficient and make it as organized as possible. And I ha add all aspects of excitement. Yes, yes, brother, man. Yeah. yeah. You back? Oh, just my, my, compu my computer. I heard you talking about Egypt, baby. Yeah, so oh, yeah. Um, then people know that you um, can't make one. We have others. But uh, yes, so I'm not sure if anybody have any questions or anybody want to talk about anything, but that's um, an introduction to our tour program. Other thing I want to show, and let me just load the page back up. And I'll scroll down. All right. So while you're scrolling down past the tour information. And these are all updates on conference calls and um, other uh, information. Lots of links to all of our social world. Uh, so you can just get a feel of what we're doing. But what I want to show you is our group photos from 2006 to 2023 on the journey of a lifetime. So this, then this, then everyone see that this is like for every, like, you know, just for the last several years, this in and out of Africa every few months. And then for the last 17 years, at least once a year, but these are the journeys. Senegal and the Gambia, Roots Journey, Roots and Culture Journey, April 2023. Uh, Ghana, December 2022. Tanzania, November 2022. Ghana, May 2024. I mean, 2022. I think slide right. There we go. And Ghana, December 2021. Tanzania, November 2021. Ghana, May 2021. Senegal and Gambia, April 2021. Ghana, December 2020. So, yeah, that was on that one. There you go. And uh, Tanzania, November. 2020. So all of those have been all these journeys since this uh, COVID-19. 
And, um, and, I, and I was on like three of them. <laughs> perfect. And you know, what you're telling people is even in the worst situation where people thought things was going on, that, that's us right there, traveling to Africa, us connecting and us, then people understand that life goes on and uh, you know, we can't, you know, we can't stop the fire burning in that connection in Africa. Uh, so that's nobody so and nobody contracted anything doing those trips either. You follow protocol and you just make you know, yes, go through the procedures and then these are the rest of them, the journeys in so many different uh, countries. Uh that's you again, brother, right there. Um that's December twenty nineteen, and that is a brother right there for South Africa, November twenty nineteen. Yeah, the blue shirts. And uh, Ghana, May twenty nineteen. Ghana, November 2018. Oh, okay. And you're um, some more Ghana. Yeah, I, was, I was on that tour too. It was on all the different countries. Ghana, Togo, Benin. You know, so some people, we, we, do, we, could, we do two country tour, three country tour, not something that we really do anymore, but these are some of the things that we do. Uh, Brazil, Journey, July 2017. Okay. More Ghana, May 2017. And this, yes, and this is actually Ethiopia. We're at, you know, in Gandar, right there by the, the castles, you know. They had castles in Ethiopia. I've never seen castles in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I want to see, hey, I want to see castles. Yeah, so Ethiopia is a, it's a trip, brother. It's like, like, do they really build all these things? Like, you know, it's either them or uh, some, 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 some space aliens. aliens. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's very impressive, and um, you know, they're very impressive. Um, and then you know, the country have lots of small airports, and they're big on aviation. Now you're yeah. talking my language. Yeah, and back in the days, yeah. So it's um, oh yeah. So the last time we was in Ethiopia, we went to visit the um, the maintenance facility um for um, you know, the maintenance and the, the pilot facility. Uh, this is a nice little tour. Um, not, you know, it's um, it's uh, it's as impressive as what as what you see here in Atlanta. Um, it's not as big, first of all. Right. But uh, it's uh, very impressive. Uh, very modern and high tech. So Ethiopia is serious in you know in their country. So, but that uh, that was a great experience. And from here on, you know, we just have ten years of this um, annual Ghana tour. It's October 2016, all the way back to December 2016. These are some of the old school flow. So family, the journey, you know, continues and we just keep the energy going. And then that's how simple we started. Like I tell people, all we just have to do is start. Is this, uh, there's a few of us right there, eight of us right there. And then eight turned out to be this big group 10 months later. That's what we want. So that's what we're doing then, you know, following near, same thing. So there you go, family. That is the our journey flow of okay. all the countries that we have been to all tours. So that accounts for at least 30 tours right there. And um, that's uh, with a period of the 17, um, 17 years. And some pictures, uh, you can tell some pictures are older when you see my little boy. Sometimes he's like a little boy, and sometimes you see him looking like a big man. All right. That's a, that's a period of 10 years I'm traveling. Um, you, see, so, you see, there was no lions. Nobody got hurt. Everybody was enjoying themselves. Everybody learned some stuff. We got to see culture. We got to see art. We got to taste some very good food. Nobody got sick doing the cold beer flu and I mean when you go on these tours it definitely changes you it it, it it washes away some of the propaganda and the indoctrination that we have received over being in the, uh, these western nations so this is what you're doing you're paying for education and you're paying to get your brain un, un whitewashed I guess if that's a, if that's a word uh, because a lot of times you be when people do contact me they start talking about wild animals and, and stuff that's just kind of absurd to me at this point, considering we have all this documentation and photos and neither one of us have been bit by a cheetah or a lion. <laughs> and, 
we haven't got sick. We didn't get kidnapped. Nobody got robbed. Nobody got injured. We went, enjoyed ourselves, learned some stuff, met people, have some real good connections, right? And now we just can't, just can't believe that we went this long in life and didn't experience it. And now it's like it's like a bug. I mean, it's like a, a it's like a drug now. Every few months we gotta go for our sanity. So you gotta come at least once and experience this. And I guarantee you, you come one time on a visit, right? And you see the things that we see, it's gonna change your perspective. But you gotta start with at least a visit. Can't stay here on YouTube and just be on the couch and flipping from from us to another uh, content creator, another one, another one, and you and you living vicariously through us. No, get up off the couch. And if you don't have the money, I want to stress this because me and Bo Money talked about this, and me and Mr. Lawson talk about this all the time. If you don't have the money, we have tours set up for the next three years, just about. Work an extra job, take an extra shift, sell, get, have a yard sale. We got the springtime and the summer coming up. Have a yard sale, right? Uber. Do yeah. Uber, do Lyft, do pizza delivery, sell some stuff, make some jewelry, do something, make some money. Don't don't let money be the reason that you never get up off the couch and, and come out into the real world and enjoy yourself. Because you don't want to be uh on your on your on the bed at the end of life talking about I wish I had more time to do this, this, and this. No. You shouldn't live life like that. Life is for the living, so live it while you have it. But money is the issue. Figure out a way to make extra money. And I guarantee your brain will help you in that endeavor. But don't let money be the reason why you don't come. Because that's the main thing I hear when I talk to folks is I don't have the money. Well, figure out a way to get it. And that's what I want to add right there. Yes, absolutely, family. Uh, it's uh, one of those things where you can just, um, just pace yourself and uh, you can work towards it. So you have enough information ahead of time. You have dates and countries. So yeah, we have that you can you know work towards. Um, be as organized as possible. And so if you're not ready now, you may be ready two years from now. Yeah, but we have payment plan as well. So the brother has his payment plan set up so you can always get into the payment plan and then pay as you go until you, you pay and then just pick one of the tools that's coming up because we, we're going every third, basically every 90 days just about. And so you can get on the next tour, but at least commit yourself. Commit this. But this is, you know, this is basically a New Year's deal, we, even though we're already approaching May already. So it's almost half over with already. And just think about it, the year is almost half over with. And some folks, because even the people that's going to listen to this on the playback, have not taken a vacation this year or last year, or the year before, and we are already six months into this, into this new year already. Yeah, yeah. And folks ain't been nowhere. You've been sitting here listening to us talk and us do things and seeing the pictures and the and the and the, the fun we're having over these last five months, and you haven't went anywhere. So you need to you need to put some uh, some seriousness, and then. Passports. Let's talk about that right quick before we get out of here. Now, it's such a demand form that the State Department is talking about that expect it about a what eight to ten week to twelve week delay. And if you if you if you get it uh, expedited, you you still looking at about ten weeks. So, hey, this thing is getting real serious now because they said the most. This has been the most applications they've ever received in the history of the nation. So somebody somebody knows something. Why is all of a sudden we have such a spike in passport applications? Trying to get up out of here. <laughs> People are trying to find alternative places to go and looking for greater opportunities. And I think we have a good opportunity because we have 40 countries or so that we can go to and scout out opportunities. Now, we have a list of, of countries that we're going to, so why not go with somebody that's experienced? This brother has plenty of experience, and I am so proud of him. And every time we go anywhere, hey, I feel safe. I know everything is going to be taken care of. I don't have to worry about nothing, and we have a lot of fun. 
So y'all need to come up, come with us and, and and join in on the fun. And I I'll land the plane right there. Any closing words? Yes, brother. Yes, brother. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting to see if some of these people have any questions or anything. Questions? Anybody got questions? I kind of try to go over some of the things that people probably would ask even on the playback because we get more people on the playback since I ain't been coming live lately. I'm, I'm, I'm really fired up more now since we're trying to build our energy up to the tour. So I'll probably start coming live more often, but Still, we still get plenty of people on the playback. So we try to answer a lot of questions. So people on the playback, their questions will be answered, uh, even though they weren't here to ask them in person. Check that out. Look at that. We're not starving over. Look at that food. We ain't, we ain't nobody starving. <laughs> That's what we have. That's what we have right Ooh. there. Stuff like that right there. All aspects of life. Come out with us on the boat out there, the, the open sea. Mm-hmm. There you go. That's Africa, right? That's a, that's well. That's one of the. That's one. Of, that's a. That's a room right there. It's a big room. <laughs> Great dining, beautiful energy. Why are you showing the pictures? You want to go over the visa process because I think that's a kind of confusing process for folks that are definitely traveling on their first visit. Yes, as far as the visa, I have to just go back to that. Uh, and yeah, that's something we may have to go over back another time, but at least let me just. Um, all right. Just kind of give my heads up on what to expect with it, because I know I wasn't really familiar when, when we first started traveling, how that visa process worked. But you usually take care of most of it anyway, so. Yeah, with the visa process, uh, usually let's uh, send everyone an email that's coming on the journey. And then um, uh, you usually have a sample application and sample details put together and just follow it. And um, some visa situations are easier than others. And some just a lot harder. I know, like the one trying to get somebody to come into this country. That process is bored. Oh my god! Yeah, it's uh, so much documents you have to submit and verification. So what I'll be doing is working on making sure the visa situation is simple. I'm just looking through this here, see if I can just give an overview. Okay. All right, and. Oh, brother, Mr. Lofton, they're getting ready to jet out of here, Miss uh, uh, Beaumont. He's getting ready to head out of here uh, Sunday. How is he going to? No, Monday. Monday. No, Monday. 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 Yeah, uh, headed to Sierra Leone. My home. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stick my toes in the sand. Wow. Mm. Yeah, All right, so what that. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the visa process and modify it because one thing it's not showing is the actual price. But uh, the visa process, uh, uh, once you fill out the application, you you're, you're basically filling out the application and you're putting in the supporting documents, and you're paying for the um, usually you're paying for the uh, visa fee with uh, either a certified check or a um, yeah, post office money order. So what I'll do is I'll summarize a lot of this thing. Uh, unfortunately, it seemed like it was in French and translated. So um, it makes it even more confusing. <laughs> yeah, because my, my wife yeah, okay. asked me about that process. I said, well, I usually leave it up for, for, for money to handle, so I just do what he tell me to do, and we get it done. So And, I, and I, we probably need to check to see if we even need to get it. Because we have our, we all have our uh, Sierra Leone passport, so I don't know if we need it or not. Uh, well, um, yeah, Sierra Leone is right here. So we so don't need to countries um, be granted 90 days valid visa free of charge upon arrival. 
Angola, Benin, Central African Republic, Chad, Cote d'Ivoire, the Demi- Dem- Democratic Republic of the Congo, the Federation of Saint Christopher and Nevis, uh, Ghana, Guinea, Indonesia, Haiti, Mauritius, F- Philippines, Senegal. So yeah, pretty much West Africa is in the house on there. So that's uh, so if you're basically ECOWAS, you're good. See, and you see that, Mister Lawson, we good, baby. And a citizen of the. If you're traveling internally in Africa, yes, you're good on there. Let me see. But for folks that that's not African citizens like us. What would they? What would they? What is it? Fifty bucks or a hundred bucks? What is it? I don't know. Just give them kind of an idea of what to expect. All right. So reference. Uh, here we go. That's what I was looking for. Because uh, a lot of time they update these things. Okay. okay. It looks a lot. Uh, all right. It looks good. So this is. Oh, uh, this is the man. I, the, I hate when these people try to recommend you to a third party people, but uh, usually what we do is just uh, submit it to the country, and then I'll also see if uh, our people there can just do visas for us on arrival or set it up. So, um, either way, uh, we work out the visa stuff. Uh, if it was like the Tanzania visa, where it's all online and nice and simple, that would be good, exactly. So oh, I, would be think, I would be thinking that would be online because the one I thought would be a little bit more progressive, but. I guess this is a new country because this is our first time going there, right? So, oh uh, yes, first time going. Mama, I'm still there. Did you know her? Uh yes, uh, she's still there. So what I'm looking for here is just trying to find the the visa fees and things to show people, but they seem to not have any like. Yeah, I didn't see when I looked at it. I didn't see any. I just kind of Googled it. It said 50 bucks, but I don't know if that was accurate. Um, and this is uh, .gov Rwanda. Yeah, so that's their, that's actually a Rwanda site. That's their site. Mm-hmm. And not a third-party site. It just looks strange at first. Okay. The good thing is... Um, is... Well, but my scanning it. Any other questions, guys? That we... Yeah, this is the first time I've never seen that. I'm trying to find that 50 that you mentioned, but that's um. I just went to Google know, and just got yeah. it off Google. I didn't go to the official uh Rwanda site. Yeah, so only way you're gonna know if things are real or not. So um. That's why I said I wouldn't. I wouldn't put much stock in it because she was asking me and she looked it up. She said 30, and I was like, no, 30 sounds too low. Then when I looked it up, it said 50. But I said, well, eventually I would just get around to asking you. For other folks, because I didn't think we needed it, because I did read on it where it says Sierra Leone and those other countries didn't need to get it on a arrival or whatever. So I just kind of wanted to go over for other folks that might, you know, have an issue, because I know I was on a couple other lives and some other people, and they was just talking about they didn't they they thought all they needed was a passport. They never even knew that we had to get visa. I was like, what? Of yeah, people yeah. say that all the time. Even people who and you know, who see that that we have the information, but it's uh, yeah. I mean, that's a that's a popular conversation with people. Some people don't know what a passport is, and they definitely don't understand what a visa is. Mm-hmm. So you just send the passport allows you to just get access to leaving America and going to other places. But the visa is for some countries who won't let you into their country unless you have a visa, and it's uh, their invitation for you to come to the country. Basically, Pretty much. You get a visa. So it's, um, you know, that's to the point with that situation. Uh, but um, everyone in general get visas because the only country to have on, on our schedule, if you have a U.S. passport that you don't need a visa for, is Senegal and South Africa. Every exactly. other country, all other six countries require a visa. 
And then okay. if you're a ECOWAS um, or if you're of a Jamaican passport, then those countries almost come down to only two countries that you need a visa for. So if you have additional passport outside of the U.S. passports, then um, you're more flexible to travel into Africa. But if you have a U.S. passport, you're limited uh, to the countries you can travel without visas. But the visas are simple, and I personally don't mind paying them. But if you can get something to where you don't have to pay for them that's or make an easy move in and out, just like uh, your, your wife, she'll be able to just you know, travel to another African country without a visa. So, And I would think that all of them will have a relationship. But no, you leave from one country in Africa and go to the next country. Uh, American citizen may be able to go there without a visa, and you may have to get a visa. Example, South Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Example, South Africa and Senegal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that we talk about, family. And these are the things that um, we have organized and prepared to give yeah, you. We'll, be talking, so we'll talk about it on the conference call so we get more in depth with it. But yeah, just know that we, we definitely looking out for you guys when it comes to that so you don't have to worry. We, we basically take care of all the work and then you just pay your fee and fill out the form and then we take care of it. That's pretty much how it's going to go. Absolutely, brother. Definitely, man. Uh, we're going to keep building this thing up and we're going to get more and more people that was wanting to you know, venture to Africa and next you know, family, you know, we you know we have a unique world. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's it's incredible. I mean, I spend my life uh, last 19 years of my life traveling to Africa and taking over 600 people just to different countries. And it's um, been the journey of a lifetime. And I'm just happy that I'm able to work with us to boost the African economy and um, dispel the myth that you know we should all just go to Europe and spend up all our money in Europe because uh, it's, I've been to different parts of Europe, trust me. It's no comparison. You keep, you can't compare any of our itineraries to anything in Europe. Yeah, maybe some of the countries in Europe are a little more modern and well, they're definitely just a lot more expensive for no reason. Yeah. Than this that that development you're paying for or things you're paying no. for. But you gonna pay for that. enjoying the roots and culture and having a quality uh time around your peers and being somewhere where you have your own people accommodating and connecting with you. There's there's no there's no other place like like the African continent. And that's why and then, and then the experience itself. Uh, some things you're gonna see is gonna be a trip. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. And, and, that's then, true. Right, and it's a, it's a, it's in and that's um, true. I can do sometimes is laugh, man. It's like exactly because you know, it's almost like you know what it reminds when you say that you know what it reminds me of. It reminds me like we 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 go through like a, a wormhole or something, and we we end up in the in the past like a hundred years ago. <laughs> some things like you see the guys. Would they be with the the carts with the wheel? They build those carts. They have all kind of stuff. I'll <laughs> be like, why don't y'all just get a truck, homie? Well, just just get a get a cargo van, get a truck, get a trailer or something. Why would you carry this on your back, basically? And they but they be strong as ox, man. Them guys be strong. I got to give it to them, brother, because ain't no way I could be doing all pulling all that heavy stuff in the hot sun. But they be having muscles bulge out of they, out of their freaking ears and everywhere. But man, it's like going back in time when you look at some of these things in Africa. And to me, that's that's nostalgic. You know, it's like wow, this is they still doing this. Probably been doing this for centuries, just like this. I'm like wow. And then you go to other parts of the country, or even in that same area, and things are just as modern. It's like wow, you got the best of both worlds right here. It's amazing, simply amazing. But okay, let's go on and close it out. So it's already eleven o'clock. So um, appreciate you, yeah. brother. As always, we're gonna have to do it again tomorrow. Definitely. Absolutely, we'll do it a little bit tomorrow, and then uh, yeah, we kind of, we'll kind of I'll kind of build up to it again, and we'll I, we'll share the link. So I shared it with a lot, a lot of folks, so they can start seeing us more. And we'll just kind of keep building the support over the next uh, ninety days. Perfect. All right, well, excellent, uh, family. Uh, take care, and the journey continues. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. We'll see you later. Peace and have grease. Peace. Yeah, family. Yeah, if y'all can see, hey, this is what it's about.
right? It's about us teaming up, right? Combining forces, combining our skills, our talents, our intellect, our money, right? Our know-how, our vision, our dreams, our ideas. It's about joining together. We're stronger together. That's what the other, the other ethnicities, that's what they're doing. Okay, they're leaving their poor villages. Their farmings, you know, may not be getting it for them anymore. And they're leaving their villages with they're selling their properties or selling their farms or whatever and taking the proceeds. And then they're striking out into a foreign country, foreign land. They don't speak the language. They don't even share the, show, the same ethnic identity with the people, but they have faith in themselves. And so they show up in, in the motherland. And they make a way for themselves. That's why I say I can't hate on that. I know, I know we want to do that. We want to say they this and they that, but they just industrious people. And we need to be more industrious. But we have an advantage. And what's that advantage? We have the same melanated skin. Okay. We have the, the same uh cultural experience. We have shared experience. We have historical uh uh background we have some of the same blood types right bloodline we have so many things we blend in with the population very easy right so and then we have an affinity for the people affinity for the culture affinity for the continent well these other folks may not necessarily feel like that about the continent they're going to feel like that and have that affinity for their mother nation their motherland but that, is that stopping them from going somewhere for better opportunity? No. And the same thing we should do, right? We have, we actually, we have a better uh, uh, situation to become global citizens because we can get stuff from China. We can get stuff from South Africa. We can get stuff from Europe. We can get stuff from America, right? Bring these things to the continent and create jobs, create a business for ourselves, create an income for ourselves. And by the cost of living being so low, the food being much more um, nutritious, you eat a meal and you actually feel satiated. Okay. You actually eat more and lose weight. How about that? Dig that. <laughs> you eat more food because the food is so freaking delicious. And it's so tasty. And at the same time, you lose weight. You literally can't make this up. You know what I mean? So get up off the couch. Dig in the couch. Find them nickels, them dimes, them quarters. Put that stuff together and put your money together. If you got the extra job, you can sell cookies. You can make dinner place at your church. Sell chicken dinners. Okay? Have a yard sale. You can sell some stuff at the flea market. You can do Uber. You can do pizza delivery. You can do something. DoorDash, Grubhub to make extra money because money should not be the determining factor on why you don't travel. You got the right set of guys traveling. You ain't got to worry about safety. We are experienced. My brother got 30 trips to the continent. I'm working on 15. And we be having the ball. So we definitely want to see more of y'all join us. You know, don't just keep staying in the chat rooms and communicating that way. Right. We want to communicate with you in person. We want to be sitting down, breaking bread, break and sharing ideas. That's the only way we're going to really be able to make a, 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 a really good run at the continent before all these other ethnicities go over there and try to dominate it. But when they get there, they don't have that same level of love and respect for the continent as we do. So why we're not working together, given the fact that we have all these advantages? We do. We just do. I don't get it. So that's I'm doing my part. The brother's doing his part. Now we need the rest of you brothers and sisters to do your part. OK, so let me go and get up out of here. My closing thoughts. Love y'all making plans right now to go and eat it to a great. Make sure you let Bo Money know that uh, you got the inspiration for me because I'll be there. My son will be there. 
Mr. Lawson's going to be there. We All three of us are committed already. We've already talked about it. My wife is coming. I'm talking to my son to convince him to get his girlfriend to come. And Mr. Lawson's coming with his girl, Ishala, God willing. So we definitely want the rest of y'all because that would be the trip for everybody to really go to. I really want everybody to go to Luanda with us because, I mean, I just want to see the 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 level of uh, it's supposed to be more like a technological hub for Africa. And that president, you know, I, I'm just so fond of that president and all the things he's been able to accomplish. So I want to go over and just see it with my own eyes. You know, I want to uh, see the progress of this nation after, you know, they've had such a um, a troubling past and now they've, they've come up out of there with flying colors and i mean they're on the move so i want to see it but that egypt trip oh yeah you know i always wanted to go always been reading books on it and then when um dr ben was going and um uh ronaldo rashidi was going so i wish i had it went with them but it just the timing wasn't right my mindset wasn't right now my mindset is right and the timing is right. So I'm definitely, if I got to be, <laughs> if I got to be blindfolded, I'm going. Egypt for show, for show. And I'm gonna, when as soon as we get back from Luanda, we'll be back in uh, uh, right at August. That first few checks when I get back, I'm going to start sending in my money. So that way it's no big strain on me but when it's time to go. I'm going to just start sending my stuff in a year and a half early. If I just send a little bit out of each check and have it paid up six months in advance and then just have my, my spending money because, you know, I'm going to spend because hey, Egypt is one of them places that you it should be a must for African uh, diaspora all over the planet. You want to be able to see those periods with your own eyes because, I mean, everything in the world revolves around those pyramids, Right movies books uh sigils if you all don't know what a sigil is a sigil is just basically uh basically a logo but they call it sigil when you want to combine words and, and images together they call it sigils so a lot of sigils are uh using the pyramid and some of this the symbolism that's involved with the pyramid so we want to go there and see that with our own eyes we want to see the Tell other people we want to really see and, and get a little history about the hieroglyphics but yeah i can't wait believe me i can't wait for that trip i can't wait so yeah make sure you know let the brother know uh you said when is the either trip it's going to be november 2024 so you got basically 18 months or whatever to put that bread together basically probably gonna run it right around five stacks so just 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 budget for five stacks and then you're gonna probably need at least a, a g ball for spending money is what i would say so i would budget for six thousand at least um but yeah we need to do that trip that would be a nice trip for all of us to do together for show for show because uh everybody else go all of the uh napkin color people we call it on on TikTok, and every everybody else go but you know we should be there should be a a, a, a pilgrimage or a, a hodge for, for people in the diaspora every year not every year probably but once once in your lifetime i, I should say to make a pilgrimage to uh egypt you know plain and simple and take that that history in for yourself you know but I'm going to close it out. So, yeah, y'all look forward to that and uh, make sure uh, if you go over to the brother's site, you you definitely make sure you let him know that um, you 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 uh, was inspired by some of the things we talked about on my show. And uh, so the brother can make sure that I get credit for that. OK, so I'm going to get up out of here. Uh, expect to see us tomorrow. Tomorrow we might just. Just to have a, like a, a, a open forum where we just have a free for all. We're just going to talk about whatever. Um, and I'm just going to come up with some of the questions that I would think people want to ask. And we're just going to just talk. We're not going to even really do nothing really structured. We're just going to talk. All right. Peace.
And Air Grease. <laughs>